The week has finally come. Two titans coming to face off. The comment sections of Reddit ablaze. Decided once and for all by someone who's Opinion the vast majority of language learners don't care about. Probably don't even know it exists. This is my review and comparison, finally, to the penultimate Japanese beginner textbook, Mina no Nihongo. Let's get into it. This week's video actually has a sponsor! I know! And it's not Mina no Nihongo, but it is Zion, a member of our own community, uh, often member of the Discord, someone who is currently going through my entire backlog of videos to get an arbitrary Discord role as a marathoner. Zion, thank you so much for buying this for me to review. It allows me to be impartial, because if I don't like it, I don't have to say I like it if this company sent it to me. Uh, and just thank you so much. You're making our whole community a little bit smarter, a little bit brighter, and just mwah, thank you. Thank you very much. For those who are unaware, and by God, I wish I was you. I wish I had your sweet, nourishing ignorance. There is a disagreement in the Japanese language learning community, especially those that are either self-taught or, I don't know, maybe they're learning in universities. I don't really know what the difference is with you people. So there's people that argue, and you have almost like teams. There's Team Genki Route, which goes through the Genki courses all the way to Intermediate, and then after that, you get into Native Material. And there's Route Mina no Nihongo, which you go through their route and then transfer to native materials. Yeah, can't believe it's that uh, argumentative, but there seems to be some hostility. So I wanted to take my time, really get into this book, make sure every page has my blood, sweat, and uh, ink fingerprints all over it. Because I think that this is kind of important in our community. Not really which one's better, but just making sure people can make an educated decision wherever they start. A really bad beginning or a bad start in Japanese could taint your whole experience with the language, and I want to make sure you guys don't have that happen. So I am not declaring a winner. I just want to give you guys honest comparisons between Mina and really the other largest book, Genki. I'm not saying that these are the best. I'm just saying that these tend to be the most popular, so I figure it's worth a comparison. So yeah, without further ado, Let's go to the hands-on reviewing table. God, I love that. It's so handsy. And uh, let's take a look at this in a first-person perspective. I'll see you over there. What? Ole. What's going on, everybody? Look e here. Dear Lord, finally. Welcome to the hands-on table with uh, my creased to hell underboard for today because uh, I'm just too lazy to scrape candle wax off this table. What's going on, everybody? This is Mina no Nihongo. This is actually the uh, second edition, the Beginner One book. Uh, of course, it comes for some ungodly reason with a CD somewhere. There it is, which we will, as is tradition, never use. I don't know how much you guys know about the textbook market. This actually is put out by the same people who do the new Kanzen series for the, the JLPT. I was really looking forward to this. Like this is, even though this wasn't what I used, I have flipped through it flip through it. Oh my lord. I've flipped through it and really tried to take my time with it, tried to understand as much as I could about the book itself. A uh, quick disclaimer before I even open the book, if you guys end up liking this book, if this seems to be something that you would enjoy, you know, working with or whatever it happens to be, go buy it. Go support the people who make this stuff. Like, don't pirate this stuff. And in this review, I am not going to be going over page by page chapter by chapter, giving all the info that's in the book away, uh, because I want you to buy it, but I do need to give accurate reviews, so I will only show uh, what is absolutely necessary in the most minimal way that I can uh, to, sh to show you what the book is, to see what its formatting is like, to, to help you guys feel like your hands are right here on the book with me, and you can make an educated decision. So, if after I review it, you go, I want this, please go support these guys. They have not paid me, to say this, they frankly probably don't know I exist, which is totally okay. I'm just here to help you guys make educated market decisions. So, Mina no Nihongo. The very first thing, actually, especially if you are comparing it, uh, let me reach over here, wow, with this guy, uh, is just the thickness difference. Hopefully, I don't know if that's coming across there, if you guys can see that. Uh, the Genki is actually substantially thicker. It's heavier too. I don't exactly know why that is. Uh, but I have, I have a hunch, and it does have to do with the format of this book. The very first thing that you'll notice when you open your book up and you look at it, take a look at this, ready? There's no English in this book at all. Now, uh, I'm only doing my review based on this book. I do not have the workbooks. I don't have any teaching books of this. Uh, so if you're going off of this review and you go, but Chad, it's in this other thing, right? 
Uh, I could do the same thing with the Genki books, right? Like I could have reviewed this based on having teachers copies and all their workbooks and whatever, but I'm just giving you a review of the book as it sits. Um, and this book has no English. That's the very first thing that I want people to kind of understand, to get. Uh, and the reason that that's important self-study. So I love immersion. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of doing like huge immersion bursts and like really kind of rejecting your native tongue for a while. Uh, I did that for about six months and saw probably my biggest jump in comprehension up until uh, really kind of difficult JLPT studying stuff. But the truth of the matter is if you're buying this book to self-study, just realize this. There is no explanation for anything that you see and if you don't understand something that's in here, uh, I mean, they might give you charts, but like what happens if you don't know what this is or how this is used or what these words are? There's no English. So this book kind of inherently isn't for self-studiers. Um, it can be, however, a really great off-the-bat immersion book if you have a teacher, if you're in a classroom, if you have a study buddy who's like more advanced than you. Definitely not a self-study book, but, but a completely competent class book. And frankly, if you're trying to go for like uh, more immersion, less English, even from the start, this is kind of your preferential choice. And that's why I think that this is actually a bit thinner than the Genki 1 book, just because Genki 1, I'll try and limit my Genki comparison, but you can see there's plenty of English that breaks down everything that shows uh, what all these are supposed to do. Um, so for a self-studier, Genki's probably more along your lines, but if you have a teacher or a mentor or something, maybe your parents are Japanese and you're just trying to learn your, your native language, this ain't a bad way to go. And also that kind of reflects in the price, right? Like on the shelf in Japan, it's US $25, 2,500 yen. Uh, whereas the Genki books are ten, oops, $10 more. It's 35, uh, 3,500 yen right there. So you get kind of what you pay for. Um, along the pathways, there are four uh, Mina no Nihongo books. There's two beginner, two intermediate. Genki has basically two beginners, one what they would call intermediate. Uh, I highly doubt any of these routes will truly get you to like an N3 if you're trying to go a JLPT route. But I would say, at least after the Genki, when I finished one, two, and uh, an integrated approach, I felt good enough to start using native materials to study with, frankly. I didn't really need a textbook after that. I could kind of, you know, maneuver my way through with dictionaries. I assume it's probably going to be the same thing with this series. Obviously, you're going to come up with price too, right? These are 25 uh, a piece. The Genkis are 35. You get three 35 Genkis or four 25 Mina no Nihongo's ish, obviously. Uh, the price is negligible, truly. Uh, I guess there is probably more money on the Mina side because you have to also buy the workbook, like for four books rather than three books. Uh, but more or less, if you're picking a route to get to intermediate Japanese, all of them are gonna lead to about $150. Now, the part you guys have all been waiting for, let's talk about content. So I actually broke all of this down. And, and by the way, for anyone that's a fan of Genki and you, you realize how horrible it is dealing with Tanaka-san for 30,000 chapters, the Tanaka-san of this book, uh, once you read through it, is truly, where's Mil Mira-san, this guy. Uh, oh my god, you are gonna be sick of this man. But regardless, uh, the Mina 1 book has, I believe, 25 chapters, right? Yep, it stops at 25 chapters. I actually took down all the notes uh, here on my phone. There's 25 chapters spreading over 80 lessons. Each lesson is essentially one new grammar point. There's a dictionary in the back of the book uh, that has all the words or phrases you're going to learn. I counted them all. It's a thousand and five words. I'm imagining there's a error of plus or minus five there. Now to compare that to Genki at least, oh and uh, now the last thing that's noticeable, there really is no kanji help here. There is no way uh, to really learn kanji other than you memorize, you know, like Fuji's on here, not Fuji. You're kind of memorizing it with the hiragana. Frankly, I'm okay with that. You guys have, I'm sure if you're a fan of me at all, you know, I deeply criticize trying to make one singular book with all the beginner stuff that also includes kanji it's just there's not enough room there's not enough time they don't have time to break down radicals and stories and stuff for mnemonics at least for english speakers that help us so i'm okay with that but just be aware that this just inherently contains one less facet than maybe genki does even though i don't like genki's kanji method so that's why i'm not holding it really against uh this text because it really doesn't matter that much I'm, i wasn't going to use this kanji method anyways and i highly recommend you guys pick up some other kanji method but now let's compare this to genki at least the genki one book right uh genki one does include a kanji method. You end up learning th uh, 317 between the two books, but just this book is 145 kanji. You also learn uh, uh, 1700 words between the two, but 850 
is about what you learn in each one of these books. This one technically has a few more words and phrases than the Genki book. The Genki beats it in the kanji. Either way, these are all words you're going to need to know. It's not like there's non-useful words in any of these. These are all words that are mandatory to know if you want to have any sort of uh, literary fluency, conversational fluency. Uh, just, you're going to have to learn whatever is the content of these books, no matter what. It's not like one of these guys has a, a section on hyperphysics, which isn't even real. I made that up because I don't know anything about science. One thing that Mina does have over the Genki book inherently, uh, every chapter, I guess, here, I'll go to whatever chapter we're going to start with. Let's do 16, huh? So these are your the forms of the sentences, right? This is how you're going to set up these sentences and what the grammar point is. These are example sentences explaining how it's used in context. Uh, then you have a dialogue that I suppose goes with the audio, but I could not care less with a little bit of a picture to maybe help you. Uh, you come over here, it does give you how the grammar point works. It splits up what the actual grammar point is here, and then the, uh, what are they called, the auxiliary sections that attach to it so you can see how it fits into sentences and where in the sentence it actually fits in. Is it in the middle? Is it the end? Uh, does it combine parts of sentences there? Uh, but the really cool thing, this book actually contains tons of, uh, of practice work. Like, think, this is where you're starting your practice, right? Which technically does start here, I suppose. But you got one, two, three, four, five, jeez. Si uh, well, I guess that first page counts as six, but it's about six. And every chapter has between roughly six to eight pages of just dense practice that you have to do. Way better than Genki, frankly. Like, this has way more, like, per question work than Genki does. Uh, obviously, you could go, well, Genki has a workbook where it has the extra work, but so does this, so this still is probably going to win even in that workbook. So if, you, if you're someone who's very hands-on, who likes uh, to really just go over a thing over and over and over again to help you understand it, maybe get feedback from a teacher or a tutor, um, this book... Uh, in my opinion, just has more content for you than Genki does. And I've heard this argument before too, where people are like, well, Mina, I don't know, for some reason's more in depth. I don't even think it's more in depth. Frankly, each chapter in Genki has like sub chapters where each one of those is a grammar point. This book, the chapter is essentially one grammar point. Uh, and so, you know, there's this argument you could say when you come over here with Genki uh, that, oh, well, this book ends on, what is it, chapter 25? And it's like, oh yeah, you're gonna learn the the connectors for te that are like morau, kureru, ageru, right? The to, the different forms of giving with action. Oh, and you don't even learn that in Genki one. You have to wait for Genki two to learn that. But the truth is, you learn te forms in like chapters 15 and 16 in Mina, and you learn it in chapter six in Genki. So you learn it much earlier. Um, so all of these books, all of these routes, stop, I, I would advise we don't think of these in terms of singular books, even though I kind of have to for this review. Think of it as the chain that goes out from each of these books. Each chain, uh, you're gonna have to know all this no matter what. It's just your preferred route. Uh, and some things you're gonna get to in Mina before Genki, like those Tay forms, for example. Uh, and some things you'll catch after. But all in all, I really think this frankly comes down to like preference. I think this comes down to, are you someone who wants to immerse from the start? Or are you someone who wants to kind of connect English, at least at the very beginning of your journey? Are you someone working with a teacher or a classroom? Are you self-studying? And you know, for budget, right? Are you are you more on a budget immediately? And you can more space it out. Do you actually care to pay the extra the ten dollars? It's really not that much of a difference. Frankly, the thing that bothers me more about these is like I've brought this book all over the world, uh, literally all over the world. It's been in I think like five or six countries with me. I've thrown this book against walls and it's still perfectly fine. They sent me this book brand new in the packaging and the bindings coming out. I don't know if you could see that. Uh, but literally, this book binding is already ripped out of the page and is being held on uh, kind of by a thread here. Yeah, you see that? So, quality of printing. I don't know if maybe it's just my product, but Mina is definitely not nearly as a high-quality, long-lasting of a textbook as Genki. And if anything, that bothers me vastly more than the content of either book. So, like I said, I really don't have a problem with the content of either book. I've used Genki. I have, would have no problem using Mina no Nihongo if I was in a class or had a tutor or something. I think they're both of equal value. They just certainly hit different niches. And hopefully you guys can decide for yourself. Are you self-studying? Are you in a classroom? 
Are you doing like hella immersion? Are you okay with connecting to your original language at the start? I don't know, maybe you hate yourself and you're like, I don't wanna buy an extra kanji book even though you really should for both. So you might wanna do Genki because it technically has kanji study, although I freaking hate it. Either way, these are all general criticisms that aren't making one book better than the other. Hopefully you guys can see my point here is that I really had a hard time. There's like not a winner, it's just, deep deep preference so why don't we why don't we tie this up let's have you guys comment on this let's head back to the outro studio uh and we'll sum this up there so yeah that's frankly it guys that is mina no nihongo it's for better or for worse either the most popular or at least now the second most popular with the vast majority of people that start learning japanese is it perfect no does it seem to have a, a specific niche that it fits very much so uh would i be opposed to using it absolutely not uh, I just see that it depends on the route you're going to take, but that's also just my opinion. And there's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of you guys out there that hate both these books, I'm sure. There's only so much Tanaka-san or, or Miller-san you can have before you just want to bite the end of a, of a Ruger. I got dark. Merry Christmas, everybody. So I want to leave the question up to you guys. What do you think of Mina no Nihongo? What do you think of just textbooks in general? Uh, does this seem to compete with the other big ones? I, I would say in particular probably Genki because I imagine that's the two most people are kind of fighting over. If you could, because I believe you're an educated, smart, intelligent person who's not just going to yell that I was wrong in the comments, please leave a comment down below. Explain not, not just to me, but to anyone that's going to read it years down the line. Hey, here's my experience with these books. I like this one more. Here's why. I think if we do that as a community, we're going to be a lot smarter, a lot more well-equipped, and we're going to get a lot of new people coming in that stop having really negative associations with the beginner level. If you guys like this video, be sure to like it down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. I do personally read all of them. You can catch me uh, at That's My Chat on Twitter, Twitch TV forward slash Chad Zimmerman is my Twitch. I stream games and fun stuff on there sometimes. I also have a Discord link down below to my Anime Night server, which may or may not be making a reboot. We'll see. It depends on how 2021 works. Likewise, if you're a subscriber, you need to stay to the end because you will get a special subscriber only outro. But if you're not a subscriber, I still appreciate you. I still respect you. Welcome to my little niche of the internet. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay as long as you want. But if you're subscribed, you'll get special content at the end, so stay for that. But for everyone else, for all the other unsubscribed people, thank you so much for watching. Love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. You're back! Hey, thank you so much for subscribing. Clearly, you're not just someone who kind of alt-tabbed out of this into something else. Maybe you're playing Minecraft, I don't know. You truly are a subscriber, and you're staying because you want this special outro. So thank you so much for subscribing. I do have a question for my subscribers, and the reason we do this at the end is so we have a little code, right? It's just you and me. Uh, in the comments down below, I do want to ask a, a quick question, just because uh, we had such a huge success with St. Chaddy's Day, it gave me tons of money. Uh, to make lots of cool equipment and great videos for you guys. Um, I want to do something else, but I don't want it to be for me. Uh, I've always talked about maybe making St. Chatty's like a, a charity or something like that, but it gets really sticky when a lot of stuff we do on St. Chatty's will get us kicked off of YouTube and Twitch so we can't do the actual charity. So what I was thinking was me and the Wicked Miscreant guys might, I think, uh, want to do something around Christmas time. Just us watching movies or, or us doing something ridiculous with each other. Just like St. Chaddy's Day, the same uh, hugeness of it, at least with us. Um, but I want all the proceeds to go to a charity. And specifically, something that involves my talents, right? So, me and the boys, were entertainers. So we want our humor and our personalities to maybe make people want to tip. Rather than hurting ourselves, like in St. Chaddy's Day. And then the money, we we're thinking, uh, can go to buying uh, bulk bags of flour because me and, and them, I guess, de facto, uh, I make really, really good artisan sourdough breads. I love them. All my friends love them. I'm really, really good at it. I've done it for years. I was thinking maybe for Christmas, uh, taking whatever small amount of tips we get, right? Like $40, $50, buying a huge bag of flour and making 50, 60 perfect artisan rolls uh, of these and giving them out to homeless shelters or, or maybe battered women shelters or, or just people that could use a really nice Christmas meal. I don't know. I was thinking that might be cool. If you guys think that that might be interesting, something you might want to watch on like a Twitch uh, where we watch funny Christmas movies and just laugh our freaking butts off about it, uh, 
why don't you, how about this? Whatever comment you leave anyways, just write a yay or a nay. Don't say anything else. Just yay or nay, because then people who aren't subscribed won't know what we're talking about unless they stayed. And then they have to subscribe, and I get to take over the world. If that sounds interesting, leave a yay or nay in the comments down below. Thank you so much for subscribing. You guys are crazy. We're almost at 18,000, and it's November. Ah! So love hard, you beautiful mofos. Love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.